everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're checking out the Dell Inspiron 11 3000 series today. This is a, a $199 laptop that I just bought at Dell's website based on your suggestion. So thank you all for reaching out to me on this one. Uh, this is the red one. They've got a couple of different colors that you can choose from. I thought red looked cool, so we'll do with the red one today. Uh, they also have a few others that uh, cost a little bit more. So they have like a two-in-one where the screen flips around on it and whatnot. There are some more expensive versions in this uh, 3000 series, but uh, as we always do, we like to look at the least expensive things on this channel, so that is what we're doing here, $199 as you see it. Uh, I should disclose up front that I have no financial relationship with Dell. Uh, they're not paying for this, for this review. I bought this with my own money again based on your suggestions, and uh, the only person who's going to approve this video before it's uploaded is me, so uh, just uh, so you know where I'm at on these things. I'm really going to be doing a lot more uh, lengthy disclosures about this moving forward on the channel because I'm just seeing too much stuff on YouTube right now where people aren't being up front about their relationships with brands, and I think it's important that I uh, differentiate myself out a little bit differently there. So this is the laptop here. This is powered by an Intel N3050 dual-core Celeron processor at 1.6 gigahertz. It has two gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage, weighs about 2.6 pounds or so overall. So this is really very similar to, actually almost identical to uh, the HP Stream 11, the 2015 edition, as well as the Acer Cloudbook. Both of those we looked at recently here on the channel. You can check out those reviews uh, linked above as well as down below in the video description so you can see these things uh, each in their own environment to get a feel for how they might differ. But really inside they're the same. It's really about case design and uh, just brand preference sometimes too on a lot of these computers these days. But we'll put it through its paces in a few minutes so you can see uh, what it's all about. 11.6 inch display here. If it's flickering at all on the video it's just due to uh, the interaction of how the screen updates itself versus my camera. But looking at it it does not flicker like you might see it flickering on screen. It was doing that a little bit earlier when I was doing an earlier take, so just be aware of that. But again, nothing you'll see in person. Uh, this is a TN display, as they call it. So these are a little bit less expensive than we see on some of the more expensive laptops out there, but it's the same display technology that's on all of the other uh, inexpensive computers that we have looked at in this uh, price category. Uh, the keyboard is kind of nice. It's smaller keys. They're kind of chiclet style, but one of the things that Dell has been doing really well is making these small keyboards very typable. So I've been uh, really pleased with these keyboards actually overall, even though these keys are smaller. They're well spaced. Uh, they travel well, meaning that the keys push down a good distance. So it is very comfortable to type on. I just turned something on there. Uh, it's very comfortable to type on. Uh, really, really nice there. The trackpad I'm not as crazy about. Uh, there isn't enough travel on the trackpad. So it, it feels like it's a little too easy to push down that click pad, but it's usable. It's just not as good as I'd like it to be. But I quite frankly have yet to find a trackpad that I like on a uh, $200 computer, but it is usable and you can get by with it uh, without too many issues. I do recommend turning off the tap to click because it is a little bit too sensitive for me. So when I turn that off, I really liked it a lot better. On this side, you have a couple of ports. You got your power port here for plugging in the power adapter, HDMI output here for plugging in external displays, a USB 3.0 port here. You also have an, a micro SD card slot where you can pop in a card uh, to offset its rather limited storage. So again, you only have 32 gigabytes of storage. Uh, you can put in a card on here and get some more storage space if you want. You'll probably take a speed hit on that because the internal storage might be a little bit faster, but if you're storing movies and documents and things that tend to take up a lot of room, uh, those will work fine on that uh, card there. So that might be worth looking at. On the other side, you've got a Kensington lock here for locking it down onto a table, a USB 2.0 slot here, as well as a headphone microphone jack there. Uh, what's, what's worthy of note here is that the USB 3.0 slot and the 2.0 slot are both uh, labeled, but the labeling is just built into the uh, plastic molding on the case. So you have to kind of look closely at it to figure out which one is which. So uh, the right-hand side is a USB 2.0 port. The left-hand one uh, is a USB 3.0 port. So if you're looking for the faster port, it's on this side, uh, not on that side. I'd like the overall case design. It is very compact, I think, because of those keys, making it a little bit smaller, make it just a little bit smaller overall as a footprint. Uh, really nice to carry around. It's curved very nicely. It is made up out of plastic, of course, so you're not getting a metal case here, but uh, it's really pretty well built and it feels uh, pretty nice to walk around with. The, key. the screen goes back at a decent distance. So you can uh, stand and use it if you wish to do that too and get a good angle on it. Uh, and overall, I'm pretty pleased with that. Uh, battery life in my testing is about six to eight hours, depending on what you're doing with it. So if you're killing it with games and videos and everything, you'll see less, you know, closer to the six hour mark or less. 
Uh, if you're doing things like word processing, email, and web browsing, you'll uh, see more towards the eight hour side of things there. So again, it always it varies as to what you're doing, how bright the screen is and everything, but I think it's feasible if you're just using it for school to take notes and write papers and whatnot, uh, you'll probably get through a school day on it. It has AC wireless built in, a one by one radio. I definitely suggest checking out my uh, wireless 101 video to get a primer as to what all this stuff means, but it's the slower of the new faster wireless, if that makes any sense. So it's fine for what you have under the hood here. It's a good wireless standard to follow. There is faster wireless around on more expensive computers, but it does have AC wireless. It supports all of the latest bands uh, that are available, both 5 and 2.4 gigahertz there. So that is the overall hardware overview. Uh, what we're going to do now is log in and we're going to uh, take a look at our usual barrage of tests, which include web browsing, word processing, a little Minecraft, and I think that'll be it. So let's take a look and see how it works. All right, so let's begin our web browsing experience here. We'll go visit the New York Times as we always do. Uh, today they've got some virtual reality thing on the front page. It might bog it down a little bit faster. You can see how fast though the page comes up, but then you gotta wait for all the ads and these uh, embeds to kind of pop up as well. So there's so much stuff that runs on these websites in the background that really uh, bog down these, these low cost PCs. And this is why people run ad blockers incidentally because uh, the websites do come up a lot faster, especially on low end hardware. So typically the website will load as fast as you saw it there and we're still kind of waiting for everything to come in here before we can move on to something else. So uh, you will experience this on these machines if you're not running uh, some kind of ad blocker. If you do run an ad blocker, I do suggest subscribing, uh, it, whether it's New York Times or whatever site you're visiting that you're trying to speed up, because it really is helpful to creators, whether they're big or small, uh, to give them a little help. So Patreon, in my case, or uh, going over to a subscription model here. But you can see when you do uh, click on an article with a little bit less loaded in, uh, the page will come up. But that is because, that little spinner there, is because of all the ads and things running, running in the background on this website here. Um, so that is kind of a, a blocked pop-up also. But you get a feel for uh, what the web browsing experience is on this device. We're going to go over to YouTube right now as well and see how uh, quickly things come up on there as far as streaming video is concerned. So we'll visit my YouTube channel and we'll wait that way for that to load up. That comes up a little bit quicker because there's less inline ads to look at. I do have a video that will spring up here once we connect. So there we go. We've got my, uh, myself speaking there. I will say the speakers on this one are a bit tinny, it's, as they all are, uh, but you do have some stereo speakers in here. They're right above the keyboard. Uh, and it sounds okay. It sounds a little bit better than some of the other laptops I've looked at. A lot of them lately have been putting the speakers on the bottom, uh, which will really have the sound vary depending on what kind of surface it's on. On this one, they're on the top, uh, but again, still pretty tinny. But you can see we've got our video running here. Let me just rewind it a little bit and we'll go uh, turn it up to 1080p and we'll see how well that looks on here. And then we'll go full screen. Now I should note that this is only a 720p display, uh, but it is able to run uh, at a really nice frame rate here without any issues. So I think uh, you're not going to have any issues uh, streaming uh, web video on here at all. We'll pull up the stats for nerds and get a feel for whether or not we're dropping any frames. And as you can see here, we are not. Uh, so it's able to sustain that 1080p video uh, at 720p just fine uh, as we've seen on other computers just like this one. So I think you're not going to have a problem with that. On the Octane benchmark test though, we got a score of 7,055. It puts it a little bit below the Acer on paper, and I'm not sure why that is, uh, but it does put it pretty close to what we've seen on the HP Stream 11. So it does perform uh, pretty much where the others are, although for some reason the uh, Acer on paper looks like it performs a little bit faster for some reason. I might go back and revisit that. It could be something that's changed on uh, the drivers that these machines are running with. Uh, we tested the Acer probably about two or three months ago now, but uh, by and large from the way it feels when I'm using it, it feels about the same. So let's take a look now at Microsoft Word. All right, so we'll use our usual newsletter template here to see how fast everything scrolls as we're moving around. So this is a lot of stuff for Word to render here, but as you can see, it is pretty snappy. It feels about what uh, the other uh, laptops we've looked at in this same class feel like. So you can move things around and adjust text very quickly on here too. So a nice performance actually. It's noticeably faster than last year's round of uh, cheap laptops. So they are making some strides there. That's part of what uh, these little changes in these Celeron processors do is they give you a little bit snappier performance, especially in this kind of stuff. So it really does seem to uh, work pretty well here. Now, one thing though that isn't much better on this one is uh, its gaming performance. These are not gaming computers per se. They're good at a lot of the casual games, you know, like Candy Crush or whatever, but uh, not so great at all the modern things. Uh, we're going to take a look now at Minecraft, which has been a, a problem on these N3050 processors. We've looked at three or four different computers, desktops and laptops running the same chip. All of them have had issues. Let's see if this one is any better. So the Minecraft performance we're seeing here is identical to what we've seen on other computers running with that N3050 processor. It's just not consistent. So you can see we go from 
decent frame rates in the 30 frames per second territory, and then it just drops down with like major lag here. So I'm not sure exactly what the uh, reasons are. It's just something I've seen on every computer so far powered by the Intel uh, N3050 chips. You'll sometimes have some really good experience like you just saw there, and then for no reason, it'll just drop down to like, you know, five frames per second and then come back up. So what's been funny is it's had its best performance uh, since I started uh, re looking at this computer uh, once I started shooting the video here. So perhaps if you uh, start your own YouTube channel and uh, cover this computer, it will perform better than it might when you take it out of the box. But uh, really, it's not consistent and you will get a lot of lag with this. And it's not something I've seen with uh, other laptops that are in this price point, even ones that are running with last year's slower processors. You can just see uh, how the lag kind of comes into play on here. So again, something going on with this processor. I don't know what uh, but whatever it is, they haven't fixed it yet. I am running the Java version of Minecraft because that's the one that a lot of people are still working with. The Windows 10 one will run better, uh, but a lot of the mods and things that people do with Minecraft are still uh, on that Java version. Now for other games, forget about it. Uh, we ran the 3D Mark benchmark test, just like all the other sub $200 computers, we get a score of 1,362. Uh, this puts it pretty much in line with what we saw on the Acer Cloudbook as well as the HP Stream 11. So uh, it's not gonna be spectacular for modern games. I think the best you're gonna do is something like Minecraft, but uh, really sticking to the casual games here, I think, uh, is probably your best bet. So that is the Dell Inspiron 11 3000 series, and so many people ask me all the time, what is the best sub $200 laptop? And quite honestly, it's hard to say at this point because uh, we've seen now three identical laptops for the most part, same price, same processor, same overall configuration. They all perform about the same, so it really comes down to a matter of preference. Which keyboard do you like the best? What casing do you like the best? And it's really kind of funny to say that, but that's really the differences here. They really perform uh, very similar. So I like the Dell keyboard. I like the HP keyboard a little bit better, but I like the trackpad better on the Acer. I mean, it's really hard to come up with uh, the one best out of all of them. So my suggestion would be to take a look at the reviews that I've done of all three of these computers and see which ones, based on what you see in those videos, might line up with uh, what might work for your personal preferences. Because really, this is what it's really about, is what are your individual needs as far as some of the uh, rather uh, sticky issues like keyboard size and trackpad performance and everything else. And that's really what I, I think is different differentiating these at this point because we've got uh, all the major brands offering computers at $200 that all perform about the same because they're running with the same exact uh, system on a chip from Intel. So I do like to go through all of these tests though to make sure that they do perform up to par with the other ones out there. Occasionally we find that they don't uh, and that's why we do these reviews in the first place. But uh, in this instance, this is just as good as the other ones we've looked at from those other brands. And I think if you have a preference for Dell, uh, you'll have a good, good outcome here with uh, buying it from Dell. Uh, one other one to look at though is the Lenovo 100S that we looked at a couple of weeks ago. That's running with an older Atom processor, but it runs Minecraft better. So uh, those are things that you might want to think about if you are uh, going to use it for limited gaming. Uh, the Lenovo might be the better choice just given that it has better Minecraft performance than we're seeing uh, out of these N3050 powered laptops. So that'll do it for the Dell. This is Lon Sybin. Leave your comments and questions below. We've got a lot more stuff coming up. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the generosity of my Patreon supporters. If you find the channel helpful, you too can contribute for as little as a dollar a month. Visit lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more.